Thank you, gentlemen. This is rumor control. Here are the facts. Hey, all. Welcome. Welcome to my midweek show. <clears throat> I'm going to keep this as brief as I can today. Um, I am presently in Las Vegas. Uh, you're seeing this as a sort of a pre-record. So, But this was a topic that I really wanted to discuss. Uh, I was considering doing a, a full-on like long-form live stream about this, but I, I think it deserves a little bit, I don't know, be compressed a little bit more, condensed, I guess. Um, and I want to talk about um, a very common, I guess, uh, comeback or refrain that you're probably going to hear a lot, mostly from women, and particularly the more uh, the more expansive, I guess, the red pill becomes, or the the more expansive it, or I should say, the more the more normalized it becomes for guys to hold women accountable. I mean, that's that's the new hotness right now. I mentioned this on my Sunday show uh, just a little while ago. Um, about how hold, you know, holding women's feet to the fire uh, in a as rational, in as objective a manner as possible, in a statistical manner as possible, when you're using hard facts uh, versus hard facts uh, a, a, amounting to reason, you are going to get to a point of diminishing returns with women. I, that's sort of been a, a kind of a popular meme, I guess, that I've been thinking about recently. And once you reach that point of diminishing returns, that's when the rational, reasonable arguments, debates, uh, conversation, whatever it is that you want to discuss uh, about the state of in, well, intersexual dynamics, of course, but uh, the state of women in 2021 uh, of this generation, a prior generation, it you get to a point of diminishing returns where you are having uh, a, a reasonable, rational argument versus an emotional argument. And when you reach that point, you will hear certain common refrains or what, when you, when the last brain cell is firing, that's when you'll get something like who hurt you. And that is the, probably the most popular, uh, this conversation is over period point, you know, end of, end of conversation, or I've checked out of this conversation, um, because anything you say right now is sort of challenging my ego centric ego invested beliefs about how things ought to work for me. Now I've seen, uh, other guys in the sphere, uh, such as Donovan Sharp. Uh, I've seen Myron, I think actually, uh, I'm going to explain something about Myron Gaines, uh, when, the, when he was presented with this as well. And the, the usual comeback is this is once you get to a point where you have, stated your case you've said okay here are the stats here are here's what's likely to happen for you usually it's with women who have got to a point where uh the plan that they thought was supposed to work out for them is not working out for them and then they have a man of any stripe explain to them why they are in the, the why they are the product or why they're in the situation that they're in presently is galling for for them especially when they have no comeback I have learned that when you have conversations with women, you reach a point where there is no comeback. There is no, it's usually a point of, of uh, they, they get depressed or they get angry or both, um, or they get fed up because there's no counter argument that they have. And so usually what happens is they rely on an emotional argument to counter a rational argument. And I've seen uh, that just recently, about a week ago, I think it was Donovan Sharp was doing a, a show that was similar to this, which was who hurt you? What to say when, when a woman says who hurt you? And usually guys will come back with, it's a shaming tactic. And in a sense it is, but you have to separate the intent of who hurt you, say like face to face when you're in a conversation with, with a woman, as opposed to the standard kind of dismissal that you will get on Twitter or on your social media, right? If you go and you type out a very well thought out, very well reasoned 
um, let's just say for sake of example, it's like why single mothers are in such a, such a state, right? Why is it that when you get to be into your epiphany phase, 29 to 31, you can't find the right guy. Then suddenly men are infantile or they're egocentric, or they all want little girls and not a mature woman who's in touch with her. You know, she's, she's at her peak. She wants to you to think that she's at her peak and I, I can go and I can, <clears throat> excuse me, I can go and show you statistics about you know uh, how why why marriage is at its lowest rate uh statistically uh women between the ages of 25 and 45 uh, by 2030 are going to be single and childless um why you are in the position that you're in why you have gone through your quote unquote hoe phase or your party years as i've stated in my second book why you've gone through that i can show you why you think the way you do right now why you want to get right with god why you want to do things the right way why it is that you're done with the bad boys and you you're, you're typing into your profile uh your dating profile uh had my fun i was so wild in college but uh now i want it's time for me to get serious and i would like a guy who is serious and if you're not serious then i don't then then swipe left right or wherever it is right uh, pass, pass me by, don't respond to me. And this is a very popular, you know, to, to hold women accountable, to, to say, to put it in black and white numbers, right? To, to show them the graphs, to show them the stats. We have the access to empirical data right now. And that is appealing to reason with women. And you cannot appeal to reason with women. Women start from instinct, then emotion, and then reason, if they get to reason at all. So when women are debating the state of women in 2020, in 2021, in, um, in this century, right? In, in a gynocentric social order, and they're disillusioned with where they are in life at that particular time, they are starting that argument from a, an emotional core, an emotional center. That's where it begins. I'm not saying that they can't be taught reason or they can't have the insight to think about things or maybe even you know change their ways that's a possibility but that argument that debate that insight always starts from emotion and men often especially you know beta male guys gamma male guys whatever you want to call them usually start from a reasoning from a, a rational standpoint I am the guy that you should want to get with. I'm, I'm a better long-term, you know, I'm, I would be a better dad. I would take care of the kids. I would provide for them. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, technical genius. I've got my own business. Why is it that you would want to get with these hot Chad alpha guys and get, you know, run, raked over the coals with them during your hoe phase and your prime fertility phase and your prime sexual market value years? When I am statistically, let me show you the spreadsheet and I'll tell you all of these things. You're beginning from a rational perspective and you're appealing to reason. Whereas that woman is speaking a different language. She's speaking the language of emotion and you are speaking the language of reason. Now, that's not to say that you can't get that woman on a show or have her call in or maybe have a face-to-face, heart-to-heart talk with that, that woman. And she will start by listening to you going, yeah, wow, that's, those are some really damning statistics. Those are, that's some really uh, concerning. Boy, what, what, we, what do we really need to do? And usually the response is, well, uh, men do it too, or men do it worse. That's another emotional, that's a very similar to the who hurt you. Who hurt you is the end of the sentence. That's the last brain cell firing, right? That's the last, this is all I got. I'm out of gas. Who hurt you? That's because what you're saying is so distressing. And so it's such a, a uh, it, it's such a, a catalyst that destroys that good feels that, that hope that she had in her own really kind of blue pill or emotional blue pill. Women's have, have their own blue pill conditioning as it is. That hope is just dashed immediately. And I ran into this and here was, this was the first time I ran into this is it was d- during the infamous Kevin Samuels uh, call in show that I think I was there with, uh, I was there with uh, Aaron Clary and I was there with Donovan Sharp and it was myself. And this was prior to Kevin calling in and the, the giga Karen, right? Uh, Amanda says, who hurt you to Myron? And I looked over at Myron and I said, okay, I'm out. It's conversation over. I'm done because I realized we'd reach the point of diminishing returns. Anything you say at that point, any statistics that you give, anything that comes comes after that 
is is it falls on deaf ears there's there you're not going to convince her you're, in fact the the whole point of the conversation is really kind of to bring her almost to that point that's when you check out and I, that's when i have found personally that that's the best time to sort of just say okay yeah I, i'm gonna lose this argument but not because i'm wrong <laughs> and so when a woman says um who hurt you uh myron did this and donovan did this as well is they think that that is a shaming tactic and in a sense it is too but it is also an appeal to emotion it is trying to turn that it's, it, again it's like I'm, I'm out of gas but it's trying to turn the conversation back from a, a reasonable rational appeal to reason back to an appeal to emotion so when no woman cares about who hurt you. So if you think that this is shaming and you respond to it in, emo in an emotion from an emotional core, you are buying into the the really the fundamental intent of who hurt you. Now, again, who hurt you online? Who hurt you uh, um, on a Twitter post? Whatever. That's just a, a stupid meme. That's just a casual dismissal. And really, what it's saying is, I got nothing left. In the case where you're actually speaking face to face. And a woman brings that up and often they do it's usually presumes the point it's a logical fallacy if you think about it so it's not so much about shaming it's not so much about trying to humanize you it's not so much about like oh well the only reason you're saying what you're saying is because some woman in some point in history and in, in your personal history has hurt you and therefore that's why you think the way that you think and the problem that i see and and guys here's even if you're like a hardcore you know, well-meaning red pill guy the the mistake is to believe her the mistake is to think that she's actually starting it from the perspective of trying to disqualify you because somebody hurt you that's a mistake it's a mistake to get wrapped up into that because any conversation any kind of counter that you have because of who hurt you if you're if you come away from the rational side of things if the appeals to reason and you start speaking the language of emotion you've lost you're done because you believe that she actually thinks that the only reason you're who you are and why you're the way is is, is she psychoanalyzing you you think that she's honestly wants to psycho psychoanalyze you no it's a dismissal it's i got nothing left whenever you hear who hurt you it's i don't have i can't i got nothing else to say that's one that's one way of women uh kind of responding to an argument that they don't have any counter to another one is well i guess i should just go kill myself right or i guess i should just give up on on dating altogether i got that response from those same girls too as well it's like they have no counter to it so they throw their hands up in disgust that's one way of dealing it dealing with it then you've got the uh then you've got the giga karen who's says oh well i guess i'm just gonna die i i would rather die alone okay well that's another way of dealing with it another way of dealing with a lack of a counter argument is who hurt you because then it puts the onus of the entire conversation what you have said up to that point all of those stats and everything that you've broken down for her and as reasonable and rational empirical way that she had incontrovertible evidence right here it is right here i got nothing but the fact that you are saying this to me means that there's something wrong with you because we live in an age of feels before reels we live in the age of ego we live in the age of emotionalism emotionalism is the religion of this age and there is no greater appeal to that emotionalism than who hurt you because it presumes the point it presumes that you are there's something wrong with you there had to be something all in your personal history that turned you into this horrible misogynist who appeals to reason and rationality that she has no no counter argument for but the fact that you're even saying this means that you're not part of the emotional society here we have the reasonable society and here we have the emotional society and you're over here speaking the language of reason and rationality and empiricism and objective observations and stuff and here's the stats here's what's going on here's what's going to happen likely to happen to you probability right reason Here's the emotional side. This doesn't feel good to me. Remember when I say that men and women communicate differently. Women communicate covertly. Men communicate overtly. Women focus on the context of a conversation, meaning the feelings. How did the conversation make them feel before they consider the information? Men, on the other hand, usually start from a position of rationality and reason. So unless they're really angry. I'm not saying men aren't actually emotional. We are, but we start 
from an from a, re, a rational reasonable position usually men say what they mean and mean what they say that's that makes you honorable right that makes you you have integrity you have your respectability because your word is your bond remember that remember that back in the day and that's because men speak the language of overtness we we we, uh, we focus on the information the content of the conversation we focus on that first what's the problem i have to solve how do i solve it what's the be- how deductive reasoning how do i solve this problem how do i get to from point a to point b because there's a problem and i need to solve it information give it to me we'll we'll, we'll get it worked out but what happens is when a woman says who hurt you she's presuming that the right way to approach the data and everything else that you've just presented to her for which she has no counter argument to the right way to interpret that is from an emotion from the language of emotion from the the world of emotion and that's where the, that's where this society that's where western society gynocentric society lives today in feels before reels so how do i drag him and get him to speak the speak my language i can't i can't counter any of the stuff that he's saying but I want him to agree with, I want to win. I want to have the last word. And the way that women have the last word is they drag men from the rational into the emotional. And this is, there's a great, there's a bigger, there's a much larger scope to this, to this whole thing. I, you're probably figuring that out right now. But when a woman says, who hurt you? What she's saying is you're wrong. Everything you've said that's right is wrong from the world that I live in from the the feelings that I have right here. So the only way you would come to the conclusions you have, the only reason you would want to have this debate with me in the first place is because someone somewhere along the way hurt you, hurt, emotionally damaged you, crushed your little soul. And usually that's what, and that, and once you buy into that, and once you go, hey man, um, you know, every guy's been hurt. As soon as you say that, you're in the emotional side. You're, you've lost the argument right there. As soon as you say, oh, well, you know, uh, when, when you think that you need to humanize yourself and say, well, you know, oh, every guy has been hurt, right? That's why, that's why I'm qualified to talk about the things that I talk about. Once you get into that, you're speaking her language. You've just lost the debate. Instead of saying, look, here's, here's what you're doing. I, I understand this again, calling it out. You're already in, in rational, reasonable land anyways. So you might as well go all the way. What you do is you say, look, I know where you're going with this. I understand this. This is the, the point of diminishing returns. The reason why this is the standard trope to say to a guy when you, when you have no other counter argument is because what you want to say is you're in the right and you believe you're in the right and all your girlfriends behind you and, and all the male feminists that are white knighting for you and simping for you as well, they think you got hurt too. Because no one who thinks the way that the rest of us do, the group, the, the larger global tribe that's behind me in emotional land, no one thinks the way you do. You're a misogynist. You're a chauvinist. There's something wrong with you. You're a misogynist, right? Um, and there's, so there's something wrong with you. Well, what could that be? Because you don't think like us emotional people do. And the reason why you are even bringing this up or bringing me on the show or having me t- talk to you, even if it's across the coffee table, is because someone hurt you. And this is you venting. And this is you projecting. And now suddenly we get really Freudian, right? Carl Jung, uh, you know, Sigmund Freud. Now suddenly, suddenly we want to talk about projection, right? Suddenly we want to talk about uh, catharsis. So this is your catharsis. We have become armchair psychologists. And the only thing most women have as a reference, whether they know so or not, is falling back on ancient psychotherapy terms. And so they're dragging you from your rational, reasonable state into their conversation. Now, remember, if you are trying, this kind of goes back to, I get a question a lot. Guys say, well, should I tell my girlfriend or what if my girlfriend finds out that I'm red pill or uh, I don't want to speak the language of emotion. I don't want to be covert. A woman should say what she means. means what she says. She should come over to me, right? She should come over to the rational, reasonable side. First of all, that's not going to happen. And second of all, whenever you reveal that kind, whenever you reveal the red pill or you, what you're doing, really your red pill awareness. And in, and in a sense, when you're showing statistics and, and, you know, realities and, and uh, empirical truths that the red pill praxology presents for us, when you do that, 
you, you, you blow any chance of ever having an emotional connection with that woman because you don't have an emotional connection. You're not starting there. You're starting from a rational, reasonable. Women don't fall in love with guys rationally. They, they do so from a point of emotion. They fall in love with that guy or they, they want to have sex with that guy or they want to be intimate with that guy, not because he stated his case to the judge and she goes, well, you know what? You're right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up Chad and I'm going to give up uh, the hot guy in the foam cannon party and I'm going to give up all that stuff that makes me feel good because you stated your case so well that I agree with you. Your honor, case dismissed. That does, that's not how relationships start. It's a feeling. It's, it starts an emotion and when, that's usually where women never exit from. So the conversation is an emotional conversation. It's not a rational conversation. It works great in physics. It works great in chemistry, right? It works great in mathematics, but it does not work when it comes to women. So once you start doing that, once you make appeals to reason, you can forget, forget about making an emotional connection with that woman. I got that when I was, when I was on uh, Fresh and Fit with Hotep Jesus, I was the guy who was sort of the clinician, right? I was the guy who was like spelling things out and here's evolutionary psychology and evolutionary biology and anthropology and sociology. And Ooh, look at the big head on Rolo, right? Where in the meantime, Hotep Jesus is talking about, man, it's all about vibes, man. It's all about vibing. And you know, if I'm vibing with that girl and, and, and girls will say the same thing because they speak that same language of emotion. I'm not saying you shouldn't be able to say that or, or speak that. In fact, it's brilliant. That's really the heart of game. But also the red pill teaches you the praxology and the mechanics of what's going on while you're speaking the language of emotion. You're still thinking, okay, here's where we're going. Here's what's going to happen next. This I got to move to this point, like that kind of stuff. It's, it's much more reason based, whereas like game tends to be a little bit more emotional based. I've got it's still you know pragmatic. It's still logistical, but it's. I've got to go from point A to point B, but it's still speaking that language. So when a woman says who hurt you, remember this, it is not, first of all, it's a disingenuous dismissal. And it is, you're speaking a language that I don't want to speak anymore. And I want to win this argument, or I want to go back to my nice, comfortable, happy hope that I'm going to find the right guy, find Mr. Right, settle down and have these kids, right? I want to have my cake and eat it too. And you're telling me that I can't. And I, I, everything since the time I was a five-year-old little girl to now that I'm 25 or I'm 35 has informed me that I can have it all. And that feels good to me. And now you're saying that I can't. Now you're showing me these statistics that say, statistically, I'm going to be single childless and have a lot of cats and boxed wine for the rest of my life. And whether that's true or that's not, it still doesn't feel very good, does it? So you've got to find some way to sort of connect uh, even after that. But the mistake is to think that that is a genuine question. It's not. They don't care about trying to dig up old wounds or, you know, take the Band-Aid off or something like that. The presumption is always you are wrong because you're not emotional. You're not part of the club. You're not part of the rest of the world that agrees with her. My girlfriends are right here and they think you're hurt too. The, my, my male feminist allies say the same thing. They think that you're hurt too. Let's talk about your hurt. And so that what that does is it reframes the conversation and the, conver and the debate. So now it becomes about you and personalizes it and makes it emotional. And if you buy into that and if you go along with that, then you've basically lost the, you've lost everything because everything that you built up, all of, all of that, 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 uh, uh, the quality debating skills, right? All of the stats that you dug up, all of the empiricism that you use, all of that flies right out the window the moment you go, well, it doesn't matter because I, you know, I've been hurt like anybody else. And it, once, you, once you cop to that, you're done because now they got you. So when women say to me, they say, who hurt you? I go, I know what you're doing. No one's hurt me. No one. I've been married for 25, well, close to 25 years right now, right? I've had, you know, I got a 40 notch count. I don't regret a single one of those. I've never had meaningless sex, right? I just, I, I enjoyed the, what I had I, when I was having it. There are some women that I wish I had not become intimate with, but who doesn't, right? But it's not about hurt. I said, I, you're just trying to reframe the argument here. And the, the, the presumption, and women believe this, by the way, wholesale, they believe that they are in the right and that there could only be one solution. The only reason you're throwing this at me to the point where I have nothing left is because there is something wrong with you. 
And so you are damaged. Something's wrong with you because if there weren't, you would think the way that we do. You would think you wouldn't even have this conversation. You'd be vibing, right? You would, you would, you would already be speaking the language of emotion and chick crack and superstition and woo woo magical thinking and metaphorical truths and all this other stuff instead of sticking to your guns and sticking to the rational, reasonable debating that you've probably spent a lot of time trying you know, to prepare for or have been reading about. Uh, there's a, uh, there's a, a real danger, I think, for guys who believe that women should logically rationally reasonably want them and they get really upset when they see the hot guy in the foam cannon party nailing the girl that they've been dreaming about and have been trying to prove them prove their quality to milady for so long and usually that proving is i got a job i got i, I got a degree in physics I, I i see the stats i know all these things and usually when you know when guys get to a point they're like okay women aren't rational they're never going to go after me because of a rational perspective it's got to be from an emotional there's got to be an emotional connection there has to be some sort of emotional impact in that woman for her to actually want to get with you at some point and that's i think is a real tough sell for guys um particularly the 80 percenters like the 80 percent of guys who are sort of like the low smv guys today they can't understand why the problem doesn't solve doesn't resolve right a plus b equals c they don't understand how they get to that point and so when a woman says who hurt you they buy into it they think that that they they, they misinterpret that as genuine interest or genuine desire to know you right? oh well i guess we can just be friends then no but there's a, it's a dismissal it's a dismissal but it's also i should say that in here at the end here i should say that it's also a reaffirmation of that woman's belief in the blue pill conditioning and the hopes and dreams and idealism that she is sold as a woman in a gynocentric social order so if she can drag you from your rationality and put you into an emotional state and make you make you debate why you said all this rational stuff in the first place from an emotional center that reaffirms her investment in okay maybe all hope isn't lost maybe i shouldn't be despondent because of all of these stats maybe he's just throwing this at me because in the end, I'm going to win anyways. So it reaffirms the idealistic hope that she has that she's going to find the right guy and she's going to have the 2.5 kids. And she was so crazy in high, in, in, in high school, in, in, uh, in college, but now she's had her fun and now she wants to get serious. And now she's going to find the beta and waiting. She's going to find the guy that Sheryl Sandberg says, Oh, don't worry. And when you get to be, you know, 29, 30, 31 years old, there'll be a lot, there'll be a guy there who wants to be an equal partner and wants to, you know, do his share and is, it wants an opinionated woman and, and the, the fantasy she's, she both still believes she can go back to believing in what her ego, her personality has been invested in for most of her life for for whatever the media or gynocentric social order has or um you know a popular culture the media uh religion maybe uh you know school whatever it is that has a uh, disney pixar has has taught her that she did not only can expect and is entitled to but she also deserves and so when she has is confronted with stats or she's confronted with things that confound that that doesn't feel good in fact it makes her feel depressed that she's not going to get that that the the there is no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and so when you tell her that her only option is to drag you into the emotional into an emotional center so when a woman says who hurt you the correct answer is not to go well you know there was becky and there was Joni and there was jenny and there was susie and uh, that's don't have that conversation because she doesn't care. That's not what the she, that's not the question she's asking. That's that's not the interest she's displaying. She's not displaying interest. She's saying, "Who hurt you?" Because anybody who would say the things you do, who would be against emotional society, there must be something scrambled in your brain, and somebody must have scrambled it. Let's talk about that. It's straight out of the book of Oprah. It's straight out of Doctor Phil. We're talking about like when somebody says who hurt you we expect to hear that from a therapist we expect that to hear that from you know sit on the couch and talk about your feelings who hurt you let's resolve your ancient hurt how what about mom or here's a great one mommy didn't love you enough did she that's the presumption the presumption 
is it's presuming the point. It's it's a logical fallacy, right? It's a uh, it's bad debate. It presumes a truth. It presumes a, a it presumes a was it a, beg, a what begging the question? I think that's what it, I think that's the debate term for it. Is the presumption is you've uh, you must be hurt. Hey everybody, he's hurt. Let's talk about his hurt instead of what he's saying that we don't have any counter argument to. Uh, mommy didn't love you enough. I, you're an incel. Uh, who hurt you? Uh, all of those are the same question. All of those are the same petition to drag you over into an emotional state to say, oh, you don't get laid. You're, oh, that's little dick energy. There's another one. The, the, and we say, oh, those are shaming tactics. And they can be, but the per what's the purpose of those? What's the purpose of that shaming tactic? What's the purpose of the, the, the technique, the methodology? And that's what I wanted to get at in this in, t in today's show here, because I see a lot of guys fall in, and very well-meaning guys who are who read my book, guys who I, I associate with fall into this emotional trap. It's it's a, a mistake to speak that language because that's that's a, a a petition, I guess, to drag you from the way that you're thinking and and maybe make you question why you are. Right, to almost gaslight you, like to make you think, well, maybe they're right. Maybe I do have some, hurt. and maybe I do have some hurt. Maybe I do need, but who cares, right? And, and as soon as you get into that, and you get your 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 inside and your brain starts, you know, the ham, you know, the male hamster starts going, you're you, you've lost the argument. You're done. You need to remember when someone says, "Who hurt you?" Like physically, you know, face to face says, "Who hurt you?" That is the point of diminishing returns. There's nothing else after that. So there you have it. Um, that's today's show. Uh, 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will be back on Saturday on rule zero. Troy Francis will be hosting that show. That will be 1130 AM Eastern time. If you have not uh, picked up the rational mail, which I haven't put this up. Uh, book four religion is now on sale. Uh, the audiobook is not out yet. It should be done by the end of May. I believe is, is what uh, Sam Bada is telling me right now. Um, however, you can pick up the, uh, the Kindle version and you can get the print version, which I highly recommend since I did the layout. And, um, I think that's it. Uh, thanks for watching guys. And if you have any questions, if you have, you want to comment about this, I'm more than happy to have the discussion with you. Uh, take it to the comments and I will see you guys later.